Birmingham Stadium for the Super Middleweight Championship of the World. So it's uh, quite exciting. Everyone's going to be looking forward to whether you're a boxing fan or not. And the people of Cardiff prepare to host what could be the largest indoor boxing event Europe has ever seen. With businesses expecting to make a killing in the run-up to the fight. Well, they'll, they'll be licking their lips ahead of this one. I'm told there are about 50,000 tickets already being sold. And I, I think most of those will be from out of Cardiff. With 50 to 60,000 people coming into the city for a couple of days, we've estimated that it's between 5 and 10 million pounds. It's worth that much to the city. Meanwhile, 20 miles away in Newbridge, the old working class town where Kalzaki trains, the locals also count the days until their native son heads to battle. Yeah. Right, so you'll be sitting away right by there on the front, yeah. um, looking straight across at the, at the fight there, and you should knock him out on this side, right? that's, that's the same, you knock him out on, so you should be all right there. <laughs> It's, it's time for him to prove now that he is this, uh, the best super middleweight in the world and what better stage than the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. For a Welsh sporting public starved for success, the unification showdown between the two undefeated titleists couldn't have come at a better time. The Wales rugby team in the past year have had one of their worst years in memory. They were knocked out of the World Cup in the group stage to Fiji which was disastrous in this country. The football team are struggling badly. The main club football side have also had a very poor year. So it is fair to say Joe really does carry, carry the hopes of a nation on his shoulders. Amid the anticipation, Kalzaki keeps his composure as he prepares for the fight of his life. There's always pressure in every fight. You know, people say 50,000 people are going to turn up. Is that going to be added pressure? No, this not matter 5,000 people because you know, it's much, there's enough pressure with the guy who's in the, the opposite corner. But a victory for the Bride of Wales this Saturday could resonate beyond the British shores. His evenly matched bout with Kessler has generated widespread interest in the United States and will be shown live in prime time across the Atlantic. Whoever wins this contest is going to have a major impact on European boxing. And let me put it to you this way. If the toughest guy in your street was going to box the toughest guy in the next street, everyone would want to go and see that fight. And in Mikel Kessler and Joe Calzaghi, what you have right now is two undefeated sportsmen who appeal to the public, who are good looking, if you like the old fashioned um, black and white 50s heroes, and they're going to be boxing each other. The day before the eagerly awaited fight, throngs begin descending on Cardiff from all directions. They're coming from all over the United Kingdom, that there's a large contingency coming in from America, uh, and of course there are some Danes coming in as well. <laughs> the city's full, we've got about seven or 8,000 beds in the city and in the area, and they're all taken. But as night falls, it becomes clear sleep is not on the agenda. For fans here in support of Kalzaki. And Kessler will have more than his opponent's fists to contend with when he steps into the ring for the epic showdown. There's no chance that he has ever fought in any kind of environment close to this. You know, He is going to have his fans, he's going to have maybe 2,000 people supporting him, but he's going to be so outweighed by Joe's supporters. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard said that Peter Manfredo found it very, very intimidating, and that was just 35,000 you know, with, with over 50. The noise and the atmosphere will be, will be something special. One more note in this scenario. It is one hour past midnight here, which means that this almost all Welsh, almost all Kalzaki crowd of more than 50,000 has had several hours to oil itself up in preparation to support their man. We'll see how big a factor the crowd will be tonight. Turning now to HBO boxing analyst Max Kellerman. Max, the 168-pound weight class, not one of the original eight divisions in boxing, has long been seen as an oddity, not as a glamour division. This, however, is a glamour fight. And one thing about 168, in order to succeed in this weight class, you almost have to have the kind of all-sport, generalized athletic talent which demonstrates that you could be good at anything. It's a great point. You know, a lot of the greatest fighters ever, Jim, 
were essentially outsized middleweights. Sam Langford, right, Harry right. Reb, Billy Kahn. They were outsized middleweights before there was a super middleweight division. The division itself is not even 25 years old. It's only been around since 84. And therefore, this is the first super middleweight super fight in the history of boxing. Roy Jones and James Tony had a big fight in this division, but for them it was really a stopover on their way from middleweight to ultimately the heavyweight division. This is what you have to know. Joe Calzaghe is the super middleweight champion of the world. Forget the belts. Kessler is his number one contender. They're both unbeaten tonight. They vie not only for 168 pound supremacy, but indeed for entry into the pound for pound discussion alongside names like Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather Jr. Indeed. And because of all of that and all the other things we've told you, this fight has been analyzed and sized up in every way imaginable on both sides of the Atlantic. So as we turn to our world championship boxing expert, Emmanuel Stewart, Emmanuel, the one thing on which almost everyone seems to agree, Calzaghe has the faster hands. Kessler is the bigger hitter. We've seen that kind of matchup many times. In your estimation, when one guy might land more because his hands are faster, and the other guy might land harder because he's a bigger puncher, who usually wins? Usually, and I'm saying usually. In most cases, the guy with the faster hands. He accumulates points, especially when a bat goes to a decision. This is not the normal case tonight. Kessler is a more accurate puncher, good balance, good fundamentals, which I love. And even though Calzaghe throws a lot of punches, a lot of different good movements, I think the superstar quality of both of these guys means it's going to be a very tight fight. And I think the defense of Kessler, where even though Calzaghe is throwing a lot of punches, if he's not landing those punches cleanly and is getting hit back with short, accurate punches, it means the fight's going to be a close fight. But more important than that, in this fight here, it's a thing that I say with Lennox and Latimer when we all talk. Champions have a certain arrogance, a certain way they walk, a certain swagger. And both of these guys have that they feel and think like champions. And that's where champions are made inside. And we have two superstars tonight in their own minds. It's going to be a good fight. Yeah, and they're both terrific guys, tremendously self-possessed, very relaxed. Quickly, the tail of the tape for Mikkel Kessler and Joe Calzaki. And you'll see one immediate advantage in the estimation of almost everyone for Kessler. Seven years younger than Calzaki. One inch taller than Calzaki. Arm length, two inches more for Kessler. Measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Calzaki worked hard to make weight and was surprised to find himself under 167 on the scale yesterday. Kessler at first failed to make 168, had to remove a couple of articles of clothing, then stepped back onto the scale and made it on the nose. Rules it about with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Joe Calzaghe, Mikkel Kessler fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified